All right, we're taking over two uh, club fitting myths here today. The first one, or just maybe not even a myth so much as an understanding. The second one's a myth. First one though is uh, draw drivers. So here I've got a Callaway Maverick Max. There's a picture of it. Let me show you what we're gonna look at here. First, it has two weights in the golf club. One is lighter than the other one, one's substantially heavier. When you put the heavier weight towards the uh, hosel of the club here, it moves the center of gravity, which I'm drawing as this red dot towards the heel of the club. Oh, that'll matter here in a second. This is really how that picture on the screen, though, of where those dots are, would look on this golf club. They look very close together, and they're not really far apart because the manufacturers have a hard time moving the center of gravity much more than that. So really, when I'm saying center of gravity, where this green dot is, that's where the uh, sweet spot of the club is. When I change the weights and I move the heavier weight back towards the center of the club, the uh, center of gravity moves towards the red dot. So that is the sweet spot then. That's an easy way to think about center of gravity is really just the sweet spot. And Harvey, you're awesome walking over. So here's what that looks like, really. There's your two pictures. Now over here, uh, I've got the moment of inertia and the vertical center of gravity, which we'll ignore for right now. But the moment of inertia with the heavier weight in the, uh, the back of the club, just in the center, is 5238. 6,000 is really the max for a driver. Relative to all the other ones, this is a severely um, high MOI driver. This would be very straight. Doesn't mean it's gonna be the longest. They tend to spin a little bit more that way, but super forgiving driver. So anyone looking to just hit fairways, this Maverick Max would be awesome. So that's where the center of gravity would be. And then uh, the MOI 5238. And when you move the weight to the toe, the heavier weight, or sorry, towards the heel, that moves the center of gravity along with it. And suddenly the MOI drops from 5238 to 4628. So still a very forgiving driver that way, but it's not as forgiving. And there's a reason for that. So the concept then is that any shot that would be hit this side of my hand in line with that red center of gravity dot is gonna act like it's actually slightly hit towards the toe. And then you know from experience, anyone watching this, that the further you get out towards the toe, the more the tendency is to draw. Doesn't mean it's going to, but that's more likely that way with gear effect. And anything hit over here towards the heel, Tends to spin more, but also tends to curve more to the right, more slicing to it. So to take advantage of this dot on a centered hit with the, the weight the furthest towards the heel of the club, so the most draw bias I can make it with this dot, to, if I were to hit a shot right here, even though it's in the middle of the club, it's still gonna act like a draw. But the lower this MOI is, the further that gets away from uh, the strike that I'm at, the more gearing there is. So I want a driver, quite honestly, if I want to draw, I don't want this MOI strictly to be close to the max on the heel hits because those shots would still fly too straight. You want to take advantage of where that center of gravity is as a slicer, and any shot hit in the middle or slight towards the toe is just going to curve more with a lower MOI. So uh, as forgiving as all these drivers are, you don't really want it that way for uh, the most draw bias driver. And the same thing goes for, for fade bias. So we've got all these different manufacturers that are doing all kinds of crazy things. I think this TS3 is a really good one to take a look at too. This has one weight and it's done in a very unique way. It's just a slider that you can pull out and on one end it's heavier than the other. So I really do like this for forgiveness. But the silver side is much heavier in weight than the other side. Uh, that is effectively moving the center of gravity either way that I want. So if I want to make a draw bias, put the heavy side towards the shaft again, and then screw that thing in, and I get the same sort of benefit with that. Lowers the MOI, makes some of the more draw bias though. They're not the only ones to do that. I've shown you Callaway, the tailor-made sim, same way. And then even the Ping G410 Plus. This one has a weight that's a little bit more towards the center of the driver. Uh, which is good and bad, it has its own caveats, but to talk about this today, putting the heaviest weight towards the shaft tends to give you that same sort of CG movement towards the heel and a more draw bias driver. So why are clubs made like that? Well, you move the center of gravity over here, then any shot hit this way tends to curve more to the left or draw for a right-handed player, and that's what you want when you buy drivers like that. So take that knowledge and uh, just sort of understand what it is, what you're, why you're buying what you buy. If you slice, draw drivers do help, and this is the science behind why, they, why you have actually done that. Understanding that can help you solve a bunch of problems in golf, especially your driver. Next one though, Dave, you ready? You've been asking all about this. I'm ready. Why do lie boards lie? This one is a 
This one is a tough one for me. And I would say that uh, uh, talking to my buddy Paul Wood from Ping, uh, he was on one of these earlier shows that we did, uh, he made a good point that I try to think of all the time, but I also don't want to let people off the hook. And he said, all of this club fitting stuff, like something I just talked about here, all the way down to why lie words aren't the best way to fit for lie angle, um, it's hard. There's a lot to learn, a lot right. to know. I think someone that's going to talk about these concepts in a video and claim to be an expert should, should really know their stuff, though. But I still see people hitting off of a lie board to fit their, their irons. So the, the purpose of a lie angle, maybe we should start with that, what it is with your irons, and I've got some tape on here that we'll talk about here in a second. The more that I hit this golf shot and the sole of my club starts to deviate away from the ground, the tougher it is for me to aim the face straight. That isn't really a steadfast rule, though, because of the shape of the, the sole plays a role in that design. Right. What you're really trying to do is aim the loft, this part where you would hit the ball. Aim that wherever you want the ball to start, the opposite of what Brandel Chambly says. Uh, <laughs> where you want it to start. So if I want to draw, I don't want to have my, my club face angle aimed straight at the hole because the ball would start there and then curve away from it. That's not helpful. So I want to use the lie angle piece, which is the adjustment of the club where the heel goes more downward or the toe does. Uh, and ideally, I wouldn't bother with that whatsoever. I would just aim the loft where I want this to start. So to do that, this is the piece that matters. So the first flaw in the the idea here is that if the sole of the club matches the, uh, the board perfectly, so if I hit this shot and I make a mark on the sole exactly in the middle of the club, right. that that must mean my club face is aimed straight. It sounds great in theory, it's not how it works. A lot of these clubs, especially for the, the higher handicap, higher MOI, more forgiving clubs, have a lot more club on the toe side. Okay. So a lot more mass. Yeah, more mass, yeah. but it's also the sole is shaped so that if you do hit it a little fat that way, there's actually some bounce and some relief okay. on that end, so the club would bounce off the ground. Well, if I hit a, a Sim Max, a lot of the old Callaway dry irons come to mind, if I hit a good shot, I might have my club face angle, which we'll talk, to, talk about here in a second, aim perfectly straight, but I ended up hitting the toe end of the club because it's closer to the ground over here. Right. Uh, not because the lie angle is wrong, but because it's just the design of the slope of the sole. So golfers can should not be using the bottom of their club to help them dictate if the lie angle is right, or where the face angle is pointed. Other issues, a lot of uh, people who aren't very good at golf as well struggle with this one. Aim the lie board here, you get really close to the ball, and then you don't lean the shaft forward enough. Right. Well, even if you look really closely into this, spot, I've now exposed more of the toe again without really adjusting the lie angle. So it'll read as if I need very upright golf clubs, and that's not the case at all. I just hit the wrong part of the club on the sole. Thanks, I saw you nervous for I him. Right? I didn't want you to step on our. It gets pretty close. So uh, you could do that. It's really easy to just clip a ball off of this and not make any marks at all. It's just not really indicative of what's going to happen. So the best way to fit yourself for lie angle is to find someone who really knows what they're doing first, yep. so you're not guessing. And then put some tape on the face. It doesn't have to be like this golf tech tape, but this is what we're going to use right now. So that will show us in a second here on this golf ball that's sitting on the mat exactly the lie angle that you need relative to this club. Great. So if the, I'm going to put a Sharpie mark on this golf ball. I'm going to just lay it vertical on the mat. And then wherever I hit, if it's tilted at all, matching one of these other measurements other than zero, we'll know what lie angle you need. Okay. So this is your six iron, this I would assume. This is my assume. six iron. Holy yeah. cow, I hope it's right. <laughs> Actually, Brad Spupeka hopes it's right. I, I would assume so. <laughs> so step one is just get down very close to the ground. These yep. are things you can do by yourself, by the way. Yep. Get close down here to the ground. Aim the line as vertical as you can. Yeah, Pick so up you, your French bulldog. So you got a freshly painted line. It's perfectly vertical. I'm going to make a swing and it should, it's, it it's going to show up on that ready. tape. Yep. Okay. Ready. I think Harvey's ready too. Nicely done. So show that one to uh, producer Scott over there. And then you tell me what just happened. I'll take a look too. So it was a <clears throat> little bit of a toe hit. Yeah, that was a pretty bad hit, Dave. But it does look like the line is fairly straight up and down. Yeah, so that line angle that you have there, whatever it is that he fit you to, is what you need. Yep. There, that's what I would tell you to start with. Another fallacy that I've heard uh, fits in the same line angle piece. If I want to change my ball flight, 
how can I do that with my lie angle? Yep. I'll just make all my clubs really upright. So here's an example. If I hit the shots to the right too much, a way that you could do that would be to have the face angle aim more to the left at impact. And to do that, you could change the lie angle of the club and make it more upright. With me so far? Yep. Now the face aim is more to the left. It's yep. harder to slice. Okay. Well, the, the problem comes as you change the lie angle. If you change the lie angle two degrees on this club, this is your two hybrid, yep. you might notice how barely I can make, no matter how much I'm wiggling around the shaft quite a bit to change the lie angle, I can't really change the angle of the face very much. Right. It stays almost the same. Yep. Without a lot of loft, it's difficult to move where the club face is pointed that way. So the way. theory kind of works with short clubs, but not so much when you get to the long You ones. got it, like long clubs. If you had a zero degree lofted iron and you change the lie angle, nothing would Wouldn't happen. Wouldn't matter. It would still aim the face straight. Now I've got your 58 degree and a minor change in the shaft now starts really changing the face angle. Right. So every increment in between, every club in between, you would be changing the amount you aim the face angle a different amount. Correct. So to just say, I'll make all my clubs four degrees upright to fight shots to the right or slicing, uh, doesn't hold up because you're gonna have a real tough time with your wedges not pulling those, hitting them too far to the left. So between live words lying, most people not really understanding, and I can't blame anyone, it's hard. Just yeah. like what Paul Wood said from Pitt. Right. He's one of the engineers, he understands it. It's hard. Um, between uh, not understanding that concept as just an amateur golfer who wants to just play golf, that's fine. That's why you really need the help of a coach and a professional coach at that who can also fit clubs. That's, that's not using a live board though, right? So if you don't want a championship a fit, right. don't go to someone using live boards. You got it. Okay. If your fitter is using a live board, I would immediately question him. It's fair to do that too. Ask him, why are you using a live board? I've heard lie boards lie and see what they say. And right. If it comes out with just a rambling answer and doesn't seem like it goes anywhere, I would reconsider where you're well, at. It sounds like they're going to probably say things like it's to test if your club face is parallel to the ground or flat to the ground. Maybe. Right? But maybe you just debunked why, while that might be measuring that, it likely is not measuring that. It's not. It's measuring where the sole hits the ground. Right. It's not measuring where the face is aiming. That's yeah. the difference, and that's what you need in the line angle fitting. Uh, so honestly though, I know uh, you try to drag me down a little bit when I say this, but if your fitter is using a lie board, I would question how much they really know about what it is they're, they're actually doing, which I know it's hard. Well, man. It's hard. This to know is the all these second things, time but. I've done this test. Brad got it right the first time. Uh, good to know that the, uh, that my lie is good at my irons. Unfortunately, that means that the segment from a couple, uh, a couple of days ago when we were doing the, uh, the, the, uh, know your, know your distance yeah, yeah. challenge. Uh, a lot of the miss hits were on me then, not on the clubs. How about that? It's amazing. All right, let's do this again next week. What do you think? Sounds great. Looking forward to it. Okay.